Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an IBM Cloud Object Storage instance as well as a bucket. So what we're going to be learning is um, actually how to create the instance in IBM Cloud. Uh, we're going to look at the different options for creating a bucket. So I'm going to show you how to actually create the bucket, just walk you through the different options that are available as we do that. Uh, I'm going to show you how to upload objects. We're going to do that through the IBM Cloud console. And uh, I'm going to show you how to actually uh, then delete the objects um, as well as the bucket uh, just to wrap up. And here I am in my IBM Cloud account at cloud.ibm.com. So uh, to create an instance of object storage, let's go to the catalog. So just click the catalog icon here. So um, I can either go searching down the left hand side for, um, for storage. I can click storage and then find uh, the, the tile for IBM Cloud object storage. Or I can just um, start typing in object up here and uh, it will appear on the list. So let's click object storage there. And uh, this is where I create my uh, object storage instance. So first thing I need to do is choose which type of infrastructure I want. So I do want this to, to be built in IBM Cloud. Uh, I do have the option here of putting it on a satellite instance. So IBM Cloud satellite is something that we, uh, we haven't covered yet, but uh, uh, we will do in a later video. So watch out for that. But basically satellite, um, is a means to um, create infrastructure that's outside of IBM Cloud. So it could be in your data center or it could be in another um, another public cloud like AWS or, uh, um, or Microsoft Azure, for example. Um, and you can then actually deploy uh, managed IBM Cloud services on that stack. So it allows you to basically um, create uh, and deploy IBM Cloud services wherever you need them to be outside of IBM Cloud. So it's a really, really uh, powerful um, service, but we'll look at that in a later video. So we're going to stick with IBM Cloud. Uh, next, we need to decide on our plan. So um, I could choose the light plan. Um, so the light plan is completely free of charge, but it does, I um, mean, you see here, but it does come with some uh, some restrictions. So for instance, I can only store up to 25 gig a month. Um, I can, you know, I've got restrictions on uploads and, and downloads and uh, retrieve all those kinds of things. So um, the other thing is you can only have one light plan for object storage in your account at any one time. But if you do want to uh, just play with object storage, uh, then um, then a light plan is actually a really good thing to, to use. Um, but you know, don't use light plans for things like production, for example, um, basically because it doesn't really give you the, uh, the, the full functionality. And also, um, if you're inactive for, for more than 30 days, you'll, you'll find that the, the service is also deleted for you as well. Um, so I'm going to choose a standard plan. Uh, but even with the standard plan, you know, there's no minimum fee. So um, I'm not going to be um, paying for anything and, until I actually put something in object storage. So, uh, But if you just want to try this out free of charge, go for the light plan. So I'm choosing standard. Um, I'm then going to give my, uh, my my service a name. So what do I want to call this? So um, let's uh, let's go for uh, Cloud Foundation Skill Series um, Object Store. There we go. And uh, the next thing I just need to choose is a resource group. So I'm going to stick with Rules Dev for my resource group. Um, you may just have default, but choose the resource group that, that best fits for you. And uh, I'm going to leave tags blank as well. So I'm just going to click create. And in about within about 30 seconds, you should see this screen, um, which means that your object storage has actually um, has actually been created. OK, so um, so we've got our instance created. You can see here there's, there's the, some, some different menu items. Um, so we'll, we'll maybe take a look at those in another video. But the thing that we really want to be interested in here is buckets. So um, if you remember from the introductory uh, video on object storage, a bucket is essentially the, the container that actually holds the objects that you uh, you store. Now, you can create multiple buckets. Um, so, um, so, you, so you're not restricted to a single bucket. So again, use different buckets for different types of objects, for example, or different projects, that kind of thing. Um, but let's go ahead and create a bucket. So let's click the Create Bucket um, button over there. And uh, we can then choose um, different types of predefined buckets if we want to. Uh, but I'm going to choose a Customize Your Bucket just to show you the, the full process. So the first thing we need to do is actually create a name for our bucket. Now, the name needs to be unique across 
IBM Cloud. So I think if I were to put in something like my bucket, um, what I'd probably find is that, uh, well, it must start with um, certain, a certain name convention uh, for a start. And uh, let's see if I, I get any sort of uh, warning down there. So if I click Create Bucket, um, then I would imagine that I'm going to get some kind of warning to say that that bucket, yeah, so can't, can't create the bucket. So you can see bucket with this given name already exists. So you can see that you do need to choose a bucket that is unique to you. So I'm going to use my initials. Um, so I'm going to call this uh, JLB, JLB bucket. And I'm going to call it bucket one. And uh, let's, uh, so let's put job there for me. Uh, so it's auto correct for my Mac. So, uh, so I'm going to call this JRB bucket one. Hopefully that one hasn't already been taken. Um, but um, uh, you can see that uh, there's some other things here. So don't use personal information. So name, address, all that, all that sort of stuff in there. I am with my uh, uh, with my initials. But uh, but yeah, just just be a bit careful as to what what you've got in your bucket name. Um, it must start with uh, and end with alphanumeric characters and uh, it must all be lowercase again because it's turned into a URL. So next I need to choose my resiliency. So I've got cross region, regional or single site. So looking at cross region, if I choose that, then this is where it actually creates uh, the bucket across region. So the region choice I've got is um, basically Asia Pacific, Europe and uh, the US. Uh, if I go for regional, so this is across, uh, across regions, so you can see the list is slightly longer there. So I've got things like um, Australia, and Sydney, uh, Brazil, Sao Paulo, Paulo. Um, I've got Europe, GB, so and Japan and US East, US South. So again, lots of different choices there. And uh, then single sites, this is actually a single data center, which is best for sovereignty. So if I want my data to stay in a single place uh, where I know that it is, so I can choose things like Amsterdam, Chennai, Hong Kong, Mexico, um, it's Mexico City, I think it's uh, Monterey, um, Paris, Seoul, all, all these different kinds of places. So uh, again, you know, choose choose the uh, the resiliency or the sovereignty that best meets your needs. So I'm going to choose regional for best performance. So this is where it's spread across three different sites within a region. And uh, because I'm in the UK, I'm going to choose EUGB. So that's closest to me. And then I just need to choose my storage class. So again, think about what your data is and how frequently you're going to be accessing it. So uh, if it's something that you're not going to be accessing very often at all, um, you can choose Cold Vault, for instance. If you're going to be, you know, just accessing stuff, um, you know, um, uh, once a month or less, you could go for Vault. Um, if you're going to be um, accessing things more than once a month and you need low latency, um, then Standard is the best one for you. Uh, but you can also go for Smart Tiers. This automatically sort of gives you best of all worlds, really. So so uh, it looks at your, your usage and then determines uh, what you uh, what you should have in terms of uh, costings and all those kinds of things. So I'm gonna choose Smart here um, and then move on from there. Now, the next thing you can do is choose object versioning. So if you want to um, have um, object versioning, what that means is that you're protecting from things like, you know, uh, where you might accidentally delete something or you might accidentally overwrite something with a different version. Um, so what that does is it actually saves all of the versions of the document that you've uploaded. Um, so you can then choose to, uh, you know, to, to revert back to a previous version, for example, um, or, or delete previous versions. But the thing to remember is if you do enable this, uh, so you enable versioning, is that your, your storage size will increase because obviously you're storing um, every single version of the document that you're uploading. So, so just bear that in mind. Um, you will need uh, additional storage for that, and obviously that will cost you um, additional fees as well. So I'm going to choose that as dis leave that as disabled. Uh, and then there's some other policies and things that I can add as well. So if I want to, I can add a an archiving rule. So um, you know, do I want um, my data to be archived? And if so, um, you know, after after how how many days or weeks, months, years do I want data to be archived off? For me, so that's automatically. So I can do I can do that. Um, expiration. So you know, do I want my um, my data to expire after a particular amount of time? So that can be useful where you know documents have a certain life lifespan or should be time limited. So I can add an expiration rule, and then it will be de deleted for me. Um, as a retention policy. So um, 
This will actually, um, as it says there, prohibit deletes and overwrites of, of particular objects. So again, I can uh, I can add some details there to uh, uh, to 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 um, enable a retention policy, and uh, I've also got something there for static website hosting. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll, I'll show you how to do that in another video. But essentially, you can uh, create static websites and hosting within an object storage bucket. So that's quite quite interesting. And uh, you can also have quota limits as well. So, uh, so we can enable that if we need to. Uh, the other thing we can use is, is encryption. So if I wanted to encrypt the data in here, um, I can turn that on and then I just need to choose how I want to encrypt it. So is it with key protect? Or if it's, you know, really needs to be really secure, I can use hyper protect crypto services. Again, that's something we might look at in a later video. Uh, and we can also um, uh, switch on monitoring and activity tracking as well. So if I turn that on, then um, I can choose the plan. So you know, um, how much data do I want to uh, uh, do? I want to collect and retain from from monitoring activities. Um, what um, service name do I want to use, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we can monitor it, and we can also uh, um, do some activity tracking on there. So I can see who's who's doing what in there as well. Okay, so um, I want to create my bucket. So I just need to I need to cancel this. I think um, so. Let me just click cancel on that, and then I can see my uh, my create bucket button has come alive. So I can just click create bucket. Again, I'll just check that my bucket name is unique, and it should be. And uh, hopefully, within a, within a few seconds, um, you should see that my uh, my bucket's actually been created. So there you go. My bucket's now created, and I can now actually start to upload objects to it. So let's upload an object to my bucket. So I can do that in several ways. I can just drag and drag and drop something, um, or I can click here to to upload. I can also click to upload here. So um, so if I click here to upload, then it will bring up my uh, my file browser. So um, so if I want to upload this document here, which is a test doc, um, it's just uh, I think all that's in here is um, this is a, a document for object storage. So if I just uh, double click there. Um, then you can see that it's actually uploaded that document for me, so uh, so that's nice and uh, that's nice and quick. Um, but but then again, it's only a very small file. Um, the other thing that I can do is um, I can then use this button here to upload. So this gives me um, some more options as to as to how I want to upload. So for instance, if I've got a really large object, so you know maybe a massive video file or something, or or lots and lots of um, objects that I want to upload at once. Then I can select to use a, something called a Spira high speed transfer. So I need to install that on my machine. I just do that by clicking the uh, the, the uh, link there. And what a Spira is, is um, it's a utility that uses something called a FASP protocol. It's F A S P. And uh, that protocol is a really fast um, data transmission protocol. So rather than it taking, you know, potentially hours or, or even days in some cases to upload. Objects to object storage. Um, what FAST does is it is it um, it's it's a more consistent way of transferring data. Um, it's very very fast, and um, typically you know you can you can uh, reduce upload speeds massively using Aspira. So again, if you've got a massive file that you want to upload or lots and lots of files you want to upload, then you know consider using Aspira to do that. Um, I've got standard transfer um, highlighted here because I don't have Aspira installed. But that's good enough for, for, for most of what I want to do. Uh, now, the other thing I can do is actually put a prefix in front of my object. So if I want to, um, let's uh, um, let's uh, put my, my initials. So um, I can put a prefix in front of everything that I upload. That will automatically put that on there for me. And uh, then I can choose what it is that I actually want to upload. So again, if I click Upload Files, then again, I get my, uh, my, my, uh, my file browser up. So if I just double click on there. Um, then you can see that um, um, it can, you can see here that I've actually duplicated the file. Um, so it's a, a duplicated file JRB with a prefix. So you can see that. So um, I can uh, I can then click upload. So it's warning me that I've got a, a duplicate. So I just need to check my file names. So it's just telling me that the file that I've uploaded may may well be um, overwritten if it's got a duplicate file name. So what you can see um, here. Is that my files uploaded? But I've actually got two versions of this here because one's obviously got a different name because it's JRB test, uh, and then I've got test document. They are, to all intents and purposes, the, the same document. 
Um, and then just to show you um, that I can uh, I can actually upload a document by dragging it. Um, let me just find my, my file browser. So there's my document in my file browser. So again, if I just drag it, uh, let's take that off screen again. So again, check your file name. So again, old objects with identical names will be overwritten by new objects. So if I click upload, so again, it's just a warning that anything that I've, uh, that I've previously uploaded is going to be um, is going to be overwritten. So and, and again, if I've got versioning, obviously it won't overwrite the older version. It'll just make another version of it. So you can see there that I've got my transfers. You can see see a bit of a history of what I've done. But again, I've still only got two files on there. Now, if I want to actually see what's in this file, um, if I double click on it, then what you'll notice is that it doesn't open the file up for me. Uh, what I need to do is actually download the object. So, um, so if I click uh, download object, then you can see this just downloaded over here. And then I can uh, just double click on that. And then you can see, you know, this is the object that I've, uh, I've actually created. It's, it's uh, um, and, and all it's got in there is this is a, a, a test for object storage. So I can put in there something like that. Such it's actually a, um, a read only at the moment. So I can uh, I can duplicate that. Click save there. Give it a different name. So I can type hello world and uh, just save that. And uh, and then I can close that. So I've, so I've uh, effectively updated that document. Uh, but again, I've not updated it into object storage. So if I wanted to upload that, then obviously what I need to do is just upload the new version. So if I go to my, um, I think it should be recent. So this is the uh, this is the, the document here. So again, if I just double click there, then you can see that I've just uploaded that again. And you can see JLB test doc two has, has now appeared. So again, it's pretty it's pretty simple to um, it's pretty simple to use. Um, you can see that I've, um, you know, it, it's it's fast to upload documents as well, even though it's 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 uh, you know it's only quite a small document. But you can see generally how you know how to upload and actually download uh, documents from there. So these three little, so so whenever you want to manipulate a document, just click the three little dots. So you can see the object details, for instance. So you can see when it's last modified. You see what kind of tags it's got. Um, we'll talk about this access with SQL query. Um, and, and in another video, that's quite an interesting thing to look at as well. But again, you can see some archiving rules and things like that. So you can you can set some rules, etc. Um, let's see what else is on there. So you can restore store it if it's, for instance, uh, in the uh, if if it's been put into archive. Um, you can manage tags on there. You can download it, and of course, you can delete it as well. So if I click delete, um, it will ask me, you know, are you sure you want to delete this? So I'll say yes, I want to delete that document. So there we go, the, the document's been deleted. So I've deleted that file. Now the other thing you might uh, I might want to do is actually delete the bucket. So let's see if I can uh, just delete the bucket. So I'll click Actions and Delete Bucket. Um, then what you'll notice is that it won't allow me to delete the bucket because there's actually objects within it. So uh, buckets with objects in cannot be deleted. So again, it's a bit of a fail safe and that actually protects against um, accidentally deleting um, a bucket with objects in. So again, if I want to uh, just get rid of the bucket, then um, what I can do is click the list of items. I can, uh, you know, I can click the uh, click the, the the tick there, and that will that will tick everything within the bucket. And then I can just delete objects. Click delete, and once all my objects are deleted, I can then actually go and delete the bucket. So I just click action and delete bucket. So again, it gives me a bit of a warning. Um, so um, um, so so again, you know, are you really sure you want to do this? So yeah, delete bucket, and uh, there we go. The bucket's now been deleted successfully. So again, I'm, I'm I'm back to the point where I've got no buckets. Okay, and that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Um, as always, don't forget to go and visit cloud.ibm.com to actually get yourself a cloud account and maybe have a go at what you've just seen as well. Also, um, go along to ibm.com/training/cloud and uh, check out all the official. Um, IBM Cloud Learning from the IBM Center for Cloud Training. Again, that's at ibm.com slash training slash cloud. But that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.